there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with even more exclusive content with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free, personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. So when you dive into the world of high-end car audio speakers, you're going to find there aren't that many brands at the top of the pinnacle of the mountain. But Morel certainly is. Uh, they've been in the business for a long time, focusing on high-end manufacturing right out of Israel of some of the world's class-leading speakers. Today, we've got Dave Singh from Gemsen and us to share with us everything going on with Morel this year and all the technology that backs up this product. This is CMA Connected, presented by Sirius XM, all about Morel, and it starts now. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to another CMA Connected presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. And on today's session, we're going to deep dive on a brand loved by so many in the high-end audio game. That is, of course, Morel from Israel. Been in the game for a long time, in fact, both in home audio as well as car audio, of course. Um, really reputable in the home audio side of things as, as they their main business, if I understand correctly, is that they manufacture high-end drivers of all kinds. They've got some really clutch uh, proprietary technology that we're going to discover and learn about today and some really high-end stuff that you need to know about if you're into that kind of game. So to help me along this journey, we're going to bring back good friend Dave Singh from Gemsen, who is the distributor for Morel in Canada. Hey, Ben, good to see you. Good to see you always, Dave. And uh, today we get to do a fun one. It's just me and you. Well, not just me and you. We've got a special guest. We've got Conrad LeDuc from Sudbury Car Audio that's going to come join us a little bit later on, talk about some builds that he has. Um, but it's just me and you today, and we get to dive into, uh, you know, one of our favorite brands, Morel. Why don't you tell us, you know, for those who haven't heard about Morel, how would you best describe that to them? Well, you're you're right. It may be a brand that doesn't have the brand awareness that uh, – you know, brands such as Nike, Adidas, and, you know, the equivalents in the car audio world have. But, you know, they're a company that has a, a passion for building speakers that are going to set new standards to deliver, you know, sur the superb quality that uh, they're seeking. At the end of the day, you know, their goal is really to make a speaker that's going to sound the most realistic, most natural uh, way possible without having discoloration colorization or you know anything that's going to add something to change the sound of uh, music compared to what it was initially uh, recorded at you know and, and what you're describing there dave is from over the years i i've actually have personal experience with morel for many 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 years and they one thing has stood true over time you know although their technology is obviously improved and their power handling and all that type of stuff one thing that's remained consistent for me anyhow is the neutrality of its sound you know a lot of times um you, you've got these high-end techie speakers that when when it comes down to it require a lot of power and they, they're they're very aggressive and you need there's a lot of equalization involved with morel it's one of those things where it's just very smooth i guess is the best way i can describe it i don't know if you would agree but that's the experience that i have i'd agree 100 percent. i think when you design a speaker that sounds good from the very beginning having to go back afterwards with complex crossovers and equalization to try to make it sound good is not necessarily you know, the best thing to do is make systems more complex, difficult to tune. So getting a speaker sounding the most natural right from the get go is uh, going to make your life a lot more easier. And it's going to make it easier on your ears too. you know, natural sounding speakers. Once you throw those inside of a car between two doors, you know, they're going to be pleasant. 
and uh, it's quite the opposite sometimes when you have something that's brighter and louder it makes it a little difficult to listen to and once you're in the confines of a car mm -hmm, absolutely so for the dealers tuning in if you don't know morel is not a one-trick pony uh, dave's going to show us he's going to walk us through technology like i said but there's a gambit there's an offering that that has you know multiple levels right of, of uh, different performance and different options and um we're going to talk about that that today dave is there anything in particular that you're most excited to share with us today well you know i i want to talk about the super slim speakers in particular because those are doing really well for us and uh, i'm happy that we're going to you know, be able to focus on on those so you know we have a lot of technology to offer we can't talk about everything you know some of it is just you know uh propeller head sort of stuff but mm -hmm. we're going to talk about the important things that really make uh morale uh shine awesome well why don't we set the mood we've got a great video for like i said if you haven't heard of morale this video will really give you a sense of the quality and the style that morale represents and when we come back we'll get you set up and uh dive into learning mode with your presentation let's roll the tape great When music meets engineering, that is what sparked Morel's loudspeakers. At Morel, we constantly seek to challenge ordinary speaker design. For over 40 years, Morel's product development has been innovating speakers to perfection. We believe speakers connect to listeners on an emotional level. To overcome acoustic challenges, our unique design process derives inspiration from nature. The lotus flower and the basalt rock are the origin of our low resonance grills. Hand craftsmanship and attention to detail are at the heart of the production process. Over the years, Morel has inspired people to enjoy music all around the world, literally everywhere. The Morel sound beats in every speaker we make. This is our passion. Morel, unleash the music everywhere. Well, there you go. So there's some high end stuff I know you're going to be spotlighting on there, Dave. Um, and the takeaway from that is, yo. Yeah, Morel's no joke. So pay attention, guys. If you if you're not in on this game, check it out. They're, like I said, in this in this arena, there ain't a lot of players. Morel is certainly one of the heavyweights in this high end speaker arena. So with, without further ado, Dave, uh, we're gonna pass you the stage and uh, go ahead. Let's uh, let's learn all about Morel. Thanks, man. So let's talk a little bit about um, you know Morel and some of the uh, history of the company. You know, as uh, Ben mentioned. Morel's from Israel, and they got started way back in 1975 uh, by Mayor Mordecai. Uh, his pursuit and his love for music, um, you know, or his passion and his love for music is really what was behind the pursuit of developing w speakers that are going to sound the most realistic and the most natural sounding uh, way possible. So the beautiful thing about Morel is the majority of their speakers are all built in-house by hand in Morel's facility in Israel. And if anybody's paying attention to, you know, Israel, Israel is a technology, you know, hotspot. There's a lot of high tech things happening there. And uh, it's great that Morel's home base is right there. Um, one of the cool things that Morel is recognized, as Ben mentioned, is the raw drivers. I mean, yes, there are raw drivers that are available under the Morel brand name, but Morel's also making a number of raw drivers uh, for other manufacturers and even the OEM market. So um, on the OEM side, some of the partners that Morel has as clients, uh, here's just a, a tidbit of some of the different brands that are available. You might recognize some of these brands, you know, Totem, it's a Canadian brand. They're using some Morel drivers in, in their speakers. Um, there's Kef, there's uh, Magico, very high-end home audio brand. There's a lot of recognizable brands. and. The reason why they're using Morel is because Morel is able to achieve things in technology with their speakers that you simply just can't source or, or outsource elsewhere. But one of the really cool OEM 
uh, relationships that I think is cool is uh, with Pagani. Now, Ben, you know, you may be familiar with Pagani, but uh, everybody's heard of Ferrari, Lamborghini. You know, those are very popular supercars, but, you know, Pagani is to the next level. And to give you an idea how crazy Pagani is, you know, they use on one of their vehicles titanium bolts. And each one of those titanium bolts is worth $80. They're all machined um, and laser etched with the Pagani logo on it. And they're using 1,400 of these bolts in it. So you can imagine the cost of bolts and the cost of attention to detail that Pagani puts into their vehicles. It's amazing or it's quite the compliment that they've chosen Morel to be the sound system of choice in their high-end super vehicle. So outside of that, you know, one of the things that Morel is really known for is the design philosophy. And they take a lot of hints from natural things. This particular picture that we're looking at is a picture of the grill uh, called the Lotus Grill. And it resembles the Lotus Flower. Now, it may just look like it's a grill with, you know, some fancy holes and all that type of uh, thing. But, you know, there was a lot of design and engineering processes that were put into this. And at the end of the day, this speaker grill is much uh, or almost 100% acoustically transparent. You have to understand when you're putting a grill or a piece of mesh in front of a speaker, it is going to affect the sound. And in fact, sometimes mesh grills can create a bit of a horn loading effect. With the Lotus grill, we're eliminating that, increasing the sound quality, making it sound fantastic. And like I said, it's acoustically transparent. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, handmade craftsmanship is something that Morel takes a lot of pride in. Uh, you know, building the speakers in-house, making the cones, winding the coils, all that. You know, there's an old saying, if you want something done right, you do it yourself. And when it comes to the premium series of Morel, they only trust themselves to build these particular speakers. And they take great, great pride in um, the craftsmanship that they bring to the table. So I was mentioning, you know, and Ben can chime in here, some of the different, because Ben, you know, is a huge uh, supercar fan, but uh, here are some of the other premium projects outside of Pagani. You've got Karma, you've got uh, Starcraft, uh, Stancraft, and uh, Mazzanati. You know, all of these are uber high-end um, supercars that, you know, really trust oh, trust Morel to bring that level of performance that matches the level of performance of these vehicles. These vehicles, you know, they have their choice of any product that they can put out there on the market. People are paying big dollars for these type of vehicles. And the fact that these brands trust Morel to deliver the sound in their vehicles is a big compliment to Morel. But one of the things I really want to, you know, spend a little bit of time on is, you know, outside of Morel building speakers themselves and being in Israel and the goal of, um, you know, building the best sounding speakers, the things that go are behind this to make that happen are some of the innovative technologies. Now, there's several dozen different technologies Morel uses, but uh, here's some key ones. And one of them is called the Hexatech Aluminum Voice Coil. Now, if you've seen a voice coil, you'll see that it's basically a bobbin with some copper or aluminum wire that's wrapped around it. Most of the time, this wire's circular in shape. Well, when you're stacking that wire on top of each other, there's going to be little gaps uh, in between each of the wire strands. And the problem with those gaps is they're air gaps. And as you may know, you know when a voice coil starts to get warm, it's got to dissipate that heat. Air is not a good uh, uh, air does not do a good job of transferring heat. Um, so with the Hexatech aluminum voice coil, each strand of wire is, is shaped like a hexagon. So when you wrap them, they basically lock into each other and we're eliminating the air gaps. Well, so why is that important? Well, better transfer of heat and that improves the power handling of the speaker. The other thing it does, it makes the speaker motor assembly and uh, drive assembly much more efficient. So that's a key technology being used in all morale speakers. And on top of that, we're using aluminum. Aluminum is a little bit more forgiving than copper is. And aluminum 
will handle, you know, transient spikes of higher power. You know, let's be honest, when we're listening to music, sometimes there's a lot of attack, there's symbols or something that might come in uh, that's uh, driving a lot of power to these speakers. And sometimes, uh, you know, speakers break. But aluminum does a better job of handling that type of uh, power and those type of transients. So it's another benefit to aluminum voice coils and Hexatech. On the back of a Murrell uh, speaker, you'll notice what looks like a little piece of uh, fabric or, or sponge or foam, and that's called the uh, car filter. When you're mounting these speakers inside the door of a vehicle, your door is acting as a giant enclosure. But sometimes it's not necessarily the optimum size. You know, the enclosure is a large, and speakers really perform well when, you know, they're in a, a bit of a resistive cavity. So what the car filter does is it acts as a, kind of simulating what an enclosure would be like um, and gives the speaker some additional back pressure. So it definitely gives you a bit of a more bass. And uh, like I said, it simulates having that speaker in a real speaker enclosure as opposed to infinite baffle. And some other things that we're using, and it really depends on the series of uh, speakers, uh, we have external voice coil um, uh, or two different e external voice coil motor designs. Uh, one is an overhung voice coil and one's underhung. But let's talk about EVC. When you look at a speaker, you always see on the back of it, you see a ferret magnet. You know, it's pretty common. Uh, usually the magnet's quite big and the voice coil is quite small. And the voice coil typically is in the middle of that magnet. Well, with Morel, on their premium speakers, we're using an EVC, external voice coil technology. That means that the magnet assembly is inside of the voice coil. And what that does is it helps eliminate any stray magnetic force. Um, for example, you're holding a speaker and let's say you're wearing a, a gold necklace, you know, that speaker or magnet energy is going to be attracted to your necklace, much like when it's mounted in the door. When it's mounted inside a door, that magnet assembly or that motor assembly is using energy and it's trying to attract itself to the metal in the door. Well, with its shielded EVC, the motor system is inside of the speaker. It's actually a more efficient way of uh, having a motor assembly because what we're doing is we're preventing that magnetic stray because there's a shield on the outside of the outside of the Morel speaker as well. So we're focusing all that energy to the voice coil. And focusing all that energy to the voice coil is going to deliver better power handling, more uh, crisp response, uh, better sound quality overall. So those are some really important things that are very different than Morel. The other thing you'll notice is that motor assembly, because it's on the inside, that means that that voice coil assembly is going to have to be pretty large to uh, go around the motor assembly. And we'll show you some of those pictures later on of what that looks like. You know, quite often when people look at Morel, there's a bunch of different series, but, you know, I'll recap the hierarchy. Um, you know, our top dog speaker is the Supremo. And, you know, maybe I'm I'm being a little bold here, but I don't think there's a, a speaker out there at any price that can really compare to what Supremo brings to the table. A great matching subwoofer, and we're not going to talk about subwoofers today, uh, but it's the ultimate tight. Ultim sorry, Ultimo Titanium. So Supremo and Ultimo Titanium, that's our, let's call it top of the line. And I don't want to call it the middle of the line because uh, to be honest, uh, it's it's injustice to consider, you know, a late carbon pro the middle, but it is a step below Supremo. So um, we have the late carbon pro and then there's the late carbon. Then there's a hybrid, the Virtus Nano, and Ultimo Titanium SC. All these speakers I've spoken about so far, these are all built in Israel by hand. And then we have a lesser expensive performance level called the Tempo, Maximo, Primo, and we also have some MPS amplifiers. So that's kind of the hierarchy, the good, better, best, I, can, I guess you could say. But what we want to talk about today is the Elite Carbon and the Elite Carbon Pro, which was newly designed, re-engineered from the ground up, and uh, came out... Uh, late in 2021. When we look at these particular speakers, here's the uh, carbon. They're available in three different sizes. 
And what's really cool is that Morel has an eight and three quarter inch or a nine inch. Now, if you want mid bass and you can fit this thing in your door, I mean, this is the way to go. I was lucky enough to have a couple of generations ago, the older Elite, and uh, I know these things blow the blow the older ones uh, out of the water, but I'll tell you, the older series, those eight and three quarter inch speakers, I mean, quite often I didn't have to listen to the subwoofer. So there was a lot of bass coming from those speakers. So there's an eight and three quarter, great for Porsches, great for Dodges, you know, so wherever you have a six by nine, there's a six and a half and there's a five and a quarter. And then it's available as a two-way and a three-way. All of these speakers are utilizing the external voice coil technology, the Hexatech voice coil, the car filter, car filters, etc. What's really cool about these speakers is it's taking some of the technology from our Talk Dog uh, Supremo series um, and it's rolled it into a late. Some of that technology is the carbon fiber cone. You might notice uh, this is a, a triple uh, layer sandwich carbon fiber cone so it's extremely light but very rigid and that lightness is going to allow the motor assembly to react quicker better response better uh, tonality um, better transient response that sort of thing so having a light cone is really important having too heavy of a cone means this amplifier's got to work extra hard the speaker's going to be stiff and you're not going to get the type of detail and uh, uh, performance that you want in a high-end audio uh, system. Aside from the Elate Carbon is the Elate Carbon Pro where everything is the same but what we've done is changed the tweeter and we've taken the tweeter it's called the Alto series in the Elate Carbon Pro. Now, I mentioned the Supremo is our top dog speaker and one of the things that the Supremo is known for is its piccolo tweeter which is a, a larger tweeter with a cavity back uh, that basically uh, uh, deflects any rear waves that could create distortion and uh, affect the sound quality of the tweeter. So in the Carbon Pro, everything is the same as the Carbon, but you're getting a variation of that, uh, that Piccolo tweeter called the Alto. And let's look at some of those individual speakers more closely. So this is the Alto tweeter. You'll notice that the power handling is quite high at 220 watts RMS. And the frequency response, and this is pretty amazing, for a tweeter is 1400 hertz to 25,000. If you look at the frequency response of most tweeters, they're around 5K. So the beauty of the response range on these Alto tweeters is you're gonna be able to get a lot more information than just the that tweeters typically are performing. And you know what that benefits you uh, or how that can benefit you is the Placement of the tweeters, the detailed information that comes out of it. One of the things that Morel is really known for is their off-axis response. And, you know, the thing that uh, helps with that off-axis response is the tweeters. When the tweeter can play much more information lower, uh, it's, it's going to give you a much better sound, much more detail. The other thing that uh, you'll notice about the tweeter is its resonance frequency at 900 hertz. I mean, that means that that speaker can get down into some of the bass regions, bass regions, I should say. So not that you want a tweeter playing bass, but the more vocal, the more information you can get from the tweeter, the better the experience, especially if you're running a two-way system and you haven't opted for a three-way. Now, that was the Alto tweeter from the LA Carbon Pro, um, but in the regular LA Carbon, pardon the, uh, the, 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 label on the slide it's incorrect but this is the elite carbon tweeter it's called the mt450 it's a more conventional tweeter but one of the things i want you guys to notice is you look at the dome you know that dome on that tweeter is quite tall quite extensive and the nice thing about that particular configuration is um like i said off-axis response is really important so having a taller dome is going to give you better off-axis response the size of the dome is also important as well. It's one of the largest domes out there. It's at uh, uh, 1.1 inches. And we're using a silk dome tweeter that has an AccuFlex coating on it. And that AccuFlex coating helps add rigidity, rigidity to that high dome, right? Because it's you know, we need that additional strength and it's also improving the sound quality. Uh, we're also using Hexatech voice call on this speaker. And you know the fit and finish of it is quite beautiful. 
because it is smaller, it's going to lend itself into more factory location, um, yeah, more factory locations. Uh, but uh, I really like, you know, what they've done with the new speaker. I mean, aside from it sounding good, the nice, uh, you know, metal aluminum edge there is uh, makes it certainly look a little bit, you know, more high end. Once again, you know, these speakers can handle uh, a good amount of power. It's 130 watts versus the Alto which uh, definitely can uh, handle more power. But the cool thing about this a late Carbon series that we're really excited about, and my slide is jammed there for a second, there we go, is the new MM3 mid-range. Now, if you guys have played around with Morel before, you know that a lot of their three-way sets, you know, they didn't use a conventional mid-range type speaker. Quite often they were using a dome mid-range, which was nice and compact, but the downfall of the dome mid-range is the amount or how low it could play so if you look at the frequency response of this three and a half inch speaker it can play from 40 to 6,000 hertz and its resonance fre frequency is 94 hertz which basically is a good reflection of how deep that speaker can play now if you look at a typical you know dome mid-range you know the resonance frequency is 300 hertz i mean it's not going to be able to give you as much uh, lower mid-range information. So this three and a half inch mid has really changed things for the Morel LA Carbon series because you're gonna get you know, more detail, you're gonna get uh, more vocal, you're gonna get some of the lower registry in the mid-range frequencies that were not possible using the previous uh, uh, speakers. We're also using Hexatech voice call and car filters and uh, that sort of thing. And the nice thing about this speaker is, you know, uh, it's it's really small. It's only an inch and a half uh, deep. So it's going to fit in practically every factory application uh, where there is a, a dash mount speaker. Okay. So last is the uh, woofers. We talked a little bit about them. We've got the five inch, we've got the six inch, and we've got a nine inch. Um, all of these things use a massive voice coil. In, in the case of these particular series, it's a three inch voice call. Now, when you think about that, it's a six and a half inch woofer with a three inch voice call. So it's got the EVC, the external voice coil technology. It's also got Hexatech and car filter. But later on, I'm gonna show you how large some of these voice calls are. You know, a, a large voice call may sound impressive, but rem as a reminder, you know, a larger voice call co can dissipate more heat. And there's some other things. There's more control, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit later on. So, you know, that's kind of a quick summary of the LA Carbon Pro. Um, at the end of the day, the LA Carbon Pro is kind of, I, I would consider it because it's the one of the newer speakers for Morel, almost one of the best sounding speakers that Morel brings to the table. Although Supremo is the top dog, because Morel's uh, Elite Carbon Pro is one of the newer series of speakers, and it steals a lot of the technology from Supremo, the bang for the buck on the Elite Carbon Pro is just incredible. Guys that have played around with those speakers and have, are used to playing with you know higher end uh, speaker brands out there, everybody has always come back to us and said, unbelievable, we've never heard anything like that. And these are guys that have, you know, had customers that have spent a lot of money on other speaker brands. So uh, we're really happy to hear that type of feedback on the LA Carbon and the LA Carbon Pros. So check those out for sure. Uh, so I'm going to skip over all the other speakers because we just don't have the time. But, you know, we're going from the top to, let's call it the middle, which is the Virtus Nano Carbon and then Virtus Nano Carbon Integra, which are really cool speakers. What makes these speakers particularly neat is the fact of the mid-range driver is ridiculously thin. Now, I remember the first time I saw this speaker at CES, and uh, you know, at the time it wasn't being publicly revealed, and they showed it to me, and I said, "What?" Well, you know, I was I was blown away by how small it was. But then my immediate thought is, "Okay, this is thin, but there's no way there's going to be any type of base. There's it. It just doesn't seem possible." But you'd be surprised the following year going back to ces they had them actually on display in a demo room with uh, a couple of enclosures uh that they were mounted in and i remember walking around that hotel room looking behind the curtain to see if there was a subwoofer there because i was blown away by the amount of bass that these two little six and a half inch drivers had keeping in mind 
that they're only 0.7 inches deep. Now think about hot rods and, you know, uh, any performance car, um, classic cars, you know, a classic car, you know, guys are spending a lot of money restoring those vehicles. They do want to improve their sound, but they're not okay with you cutting door holes in your doors, you know, so you can mount a conventional style speakers. Uh, so Virtus Nano Carbon and the Integra have been godsends. You know, these speakers not only fit, you can virtually build uh, an MDF baffle at a three quarters of an uh, inch uh, thickness wood, cut a hole and drop these speakers in and away you go. So mounting is by far very easy. And like I said, it's not going to involve any type of cutting. So we've got a two-way system and a three-way in the Virtus Nano Carbon. We'll look at those systems a little bit closer. And this is the Virtus Nano Carbon Integra. Integra is a way, I guess some people would consider it a coaxial, but Integra designates for Morel is they're mounting the tweeter deep or recessed into the speaker as opposed to having the tweeter on a pole piece like most coaxials are. When you have a tweeter on the pole piece, that tweeter is a little bit closer to you from where the sound is originating on the mid-range. So by countersinking the mid-range or making, sorry, countersinking the tweeter with the mid-range and making those uh, two sources of sound originate from the same spot, you're going to have better sound quality because you're not going to have some of the phase issues that can exist with uh, uh, tweeters mounted on the pole piece. So the, the fact that uh, the speaker is nice and recessed also gives you excellent off-axis response. And, you know, I can't stress this more. Um, off-axis response, let's be honest, when you're mounting speakers inside a car, sometimes you can't fit speakers in the perfect location where you, you, you think they would sound the best. Uh, they may be blocked by your knee. They may be, you know, mounted up high. So because of the high um, uh, dome the height of the dome tweeters and the overall engineering and architecture of Morel speakers in general to have excellent off access response, you know, choosing that right or that perfect spot is less of a concern. You know, you can mount a Morel speaker and have it sound fantastic in practically every uh, location. So I'm really blown away by this particular speaker. Not only, you know, is it super slim, but the fact that they were able to get a tweeter in there as well and an interesting fact is the tweeter and the mid-range driver share the same magnet assembly to make sure that that speaker is as compact as possible. So, you know, that's kind of a quick recap of two really important uh, series of speakers from Morel. We have the Elite Carbon, Elite Carbon Pro, um, and we have the Virtus Nano. What'd you think, Ben? Uh, you use the word ridiculous for thin on the Virtus Nano. I think it's more closer to redonkulous. Let's be honest, there is nothing out there that even comes close when it comes to the thickness of that speaker. And you mentioned different applications, Dave, and I'm happy because we have Conrad LeDuc from Sudbury on who actually did it does install these, not just did, but does install these and has some examples that we can talk about so other dealers and, and technicians who are tuning in can really get a sense of the application there. But I want to, that was a great presentation, Dave. I want to give you a second to catch your breath. In the meantime, we've got a really detailed video that goes a little bit deeper into that new Carbon Elate Pro that you were talking about. Let's roll the tape and we'll be back.
It's so nice to see hands building these speakers and not just a robot snapping it through, you know, as many as they can do in a day. It's really something to see that ha happen. Uh, Dave, obviously, lots of questions about the, some of the presentations, some of the technologies that you put forth. We're going to save those for a discussion at the end, because for now, I want to bring on our next guest, who is a dealer based out of Sudbury, Ontario. He's been on the show before, of course, and recently the recipient of a Mobile Electronics Association Award. We want to welcome Conrad the Duke from Sudbury Car Audio to the show. Hey, Ben. Hey, Dave. Hey, Conrad. What's going on, Conrad? No, I'm not no. sure if we actually officially had the chance to congratulate you on your awards on air. Maybe we did. I'll do it again. Congratulations, sir. Well deserved. Thank well you. Deserved. Yeah. Um, Conrad, you've been a Morel dealer for quite some time, and obviously, you can see in the back here, you are in your showroom. You've got your beautiful Morel display board, and you know we've seen a ton of uh, different installs that you've done. Uh, we are going to show you some of that, but before we do that, let's let's pick your brain a little bit here. You know, you offer some. You know, first of all, let's let's I forgot. Let's back up a second. For those of you who don't know, Sudbury Car Audio literally only does car audio. They do not do car starters. It's not something they focus on. It's a it's a tiny shop. It's it's Conrad and Josh, and that's what you have. And right behind those soundboards is their installation bay. It's not a giant shop, but they focus and they're passionate about car audio. So I needed to say that because you know you sell quite a bit of higher end car audio. My question to you is. What are some of the reasons that you choose Morel to be one of those brands and product that you offer to your customers? This this brand, um, you know, eight years ago when we started with them, Dave proposed Morel to us, and uh, I had not heard of them yet. And he promised me that if I tried a pair of speakers, we would not be disappointed. And we've pretty much built our hi-fi name location and location off of this. So it's super, super important to have this brand uh, in our store, and it should be for others as well. Okay. So as a brand, you you carry the entire line. I see that behind you, you probably have a good, better, best kind of scenario laid out there with a the sub and an app. Um, what are some of your best-selling SKUs within Morel's line? Uh, the entry-level Maximo Ultras do very well because for the price point, they're unbeatable in, in the entire industry. You, you can't touch the price and the quality for what they do. Uh, next would be our uh, the amplifiers demo very, very well. The fact that the 5-channel and the 4-channel are Class AB amplifiers, they sound great. Uh, and then we get into those new Virtus Nanos. Uh, we're putting them in applications that were never possible before. So they're truly not only a high-end speaker, but also a solution speaker for you. They're both 100%. You, you got it there. Uh, they sound fantastic. The demo on them is, is jaw-dropping, and they can fit in places that you would actually have to tell a customer, sorry, we can't do that, or we're cutting away from the vehicle, which, you, like you said before, they never want to do. Okay, so I have more questions for you, but I know let's bring up this presentation. We kind of put together a slideshow of a couple of builds that, uh, that Conrad has done to for a couple of his customers. Um, and different applications, different jobs, and I want you to kind of walk us through them. So what are we looking at here, Conrad? So this, this is a regular Dodge Magnum, and the car actually traveled all the way from Saskatchewan to Ontario to have us do some stuff to it. The main point about this, though, is we used some Morel speakers inside to upgrade the stereo. Uh, we used the Maximo. Uh, they were the Maximos at the time, not the Maximo Ultra. But then this was for a group of volunteers that are actually called the Saskatchewan Ghostbusters. And we turned that factory <laughs> magnum into a- Did you say the Ghostbusters? Show. Yeah, yeah, just like Toronto Batman, there's a Ghostbuster group and they do a lot of work for uh, charity. And that's what we ended up doing to that magnum was a fully functional 72 hour install, having the car wrapped, building that roof box, uh, every car, on, every light on that car worked and speakers inside and out with Morel. Now, why did you choose Morel for this particular job? Uh, when the customer was uh, talking to us for consultations, they they chose that speaker based on a, a good audio demo. Really? So they just chose it after you showed it to them. Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's continue down. So that's an interesting build. What are we looking at here? The, the one on the left would be a, a 2006 Corvette, which very common car, but with the Morel 5-channel amplifier that powered the Morel speakers and the Morel 12-inch Primo woofer, it was actually the first uh, MPS five channel amp in Canada ordered from Jemson. So it was a pretty special one. Nice. On the right is the uh, Nissan Titan uh, with an amp mounted vertically on the back wall and uh, 
just part of our, our clean install methods here. And again, that's the five channel again that you seem to favor? Yes, sir. Okay. Moving on. Aha. This was a build in a uh, Charger Hellcat. Uh, came from about six and a half hours away. We did the entire system. Um, it was it was over a ten thousand dollars system, uh, but it, it it featured the the Morel Ultimo uh, woofers that are the highest end that Morel has, and they are very very clean base. So how do you like how do you qualify a customer to show them, especially in the subwoofer category? Not everybody, you know. I would I would imagine you know a lot of people look for high end front end speakers, but not as many people are looking for high end subs. So what was your trick there? To, to sell the customer on that? We usually start with the speaker and then gauge the, the quality level of woofer and amplifier off of the speaker choice. He did choose one of the mid-range tier speakers, which helped the price of the system. Uh, but when we chose when he chose that speaker, that's when it kind of lines us up to that subwoofer. And then um, factors of the woofer, like a, a six inch voice coil and having the client know what that actually means once we explain it, they they choose that for that good clean snappy bass. Okay, so talking speakers, you're talking subwoofers, and ah, I see. Here we go. The classic car with no space. The classic car with no space, exactly. So this is where those carbon nanos come into play. Um, the burgundy plastic kick plate in the front of this this Chevy truck, uh, we did not have to modify at all. So the speaker is mounted in a three quarter inch piece of MDF. Like Dave mentioned before, the woofer, which I have right here, is only 0.7 inches thick. So this woofer does not even surpass the thickness of the wood that it's in. So there's no hole that has That's to be. That's why I said redonkulous. You, or yep. you heard me say that, right? Yeah. This is what we call the pancake. The pancake. The pancake. Morel pancake. It is unreal unreal base we do have these in the top of our board and when we demo them and then show them this the, the customers just say there's no way and that's hmm. handing it to them is the is the key so i want to i want to zone in uh, or dive in a little bit here in this image so those are the red part that we see there that is the original kick panel from the car correct yes sir and you added a new baffle the black piece uh, under the speaker that you routed and uh wrapped uh, to to look very OEM, mind you, um, and added that. And you're saying that that piece of MDF that you used to, to route that new baffle was enough enough depth to install this speaker without having to modify the original panel behind it. 100%. More than enough. That's absolutely crazy. It and, is. you know, what does the customer say when you show them that, right? That, that's that's the solution-based product. I mean, when they come here, they they hear the audio demo. They know it sounds fantastic. But then when you add in that benefit of we're not going to have to drill a three or four inch hole a couple inches deep into that metal panel through the plastic, they're, they're, they don't even let you finish your sentence. They just say, done. That's it. That's perfect. Put it in. And I noticed that, uh, I, I mean, that's one of the uh, installation kits for the tweeter, I imagine, that comes with a component set that gives you that yeah. angle mount. Yeah. Uh, morell has been very good with all of their lines from the top down to offer different tweeter angle pods like that and it, it it allows you to not have to do custom work every single time to mold a tweeter in nice okay and finally yeah this is another application based uh install for the carbon nano where this mercedes i believe if i remember correctly had about an inch and a half of mounting depth in the door so not many speakers would fit uh, the plastic door panel wasn't very thick and the carbon nano would fit in there. Um, you know, didn't need only 0.7 inches. We had an inch and a half, but we still able to, to fit this in there without any worry and still have get uh, offer the client a great, great sounding speaker. Amazing. Uh, you know, you basically um, confirm here everything that they was talking about, you know, from a fitment perspective, especially with the, the nano series. Um, and you seem to use them in, in, in a lot of different applications. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and bring Dave back here. Let's get Dave back into this conversation. Let's make this a little bit of a discussion here. Um, you know, when it comes to everything that Morel does, they offer a huge lineup, much more than what most people think right? Uh, they have technology which really separates them from 
a, a lot of the other brands. And now they have application solution based products, which at that other level. So there's a lot of things going for Morel here. Um, let's focus on, let's back up a little bit, Dave. You know, you talked about how the entry level for Morel is not exactly that entry level. So let's let's clarify that. What do you mean by that? And where do we begin the journey of the ladder when it comes to Morel? You know, entry level is such a weird term to use because, you know, an entry level Honda is not the same as an entry level Ferrari. You know, they both may have entry levels, but, you know, we're not comparing apples to apples. And one of the things that uh, Morel definitely brings to the table, and as Conrad said, you know, uh, their entry level speaker typically de delivers uh, a level of performance and sound that you would normally have to spend two to three times the amount of money elsewhere to be able to achieve. So, you know, quite often when you're looking at, at making an investment into something, you know, you, you either pay for value or you pay for quality, you know, um, what Morel brings both to the table. You're getting excellent value and you're getting amazing quality at the same time. There's not a compromise. Uh, you know, Conrad has been able to you zero in on his particular clientele and, you know, he offers um, um, the Maximo, the Tempo Ultra and the Virtus Nano. But I mean, there are all different, all different kinds of levels of morale ranging anywhere from 200 bucks to $10,000. Mm, so depending on good. the customer, yeah, $10,000, absolutely. Uh, and you'd be surprised at how many of those systems get purchased because, you know, there are customers that are looking for the best of the best. You know, they don't want to compromise. They're okay with spending the money. And at the end of the day, they're always satisfied. $10,000 may sound like a lot, but, uh, you know. It's in your bank account, man. That's, that's what's in your bank account. That's right. That's right. Uh, all so, relative. So talking, speaking to that, uh, I'd like to hear the dealer perspective on that. So how do you demo? Like, do you do like a bottom up, top down? Like, what is your strategy? And what are the exact um, speakers that you have on your board, Conrad? Could you share that with us? Uh, Dave, Dave was was bang on on that. We do have the uh, the Morel Maximal Ultras on the bottom, and then the Ultra Tempos in the middle, and then the Virtus Nanos on top. We do choose, and it's controversial, but we do choose a bottom up demo. We will floor somebody right away with the entry level morale maximums and the first thing they'll usually say is whoa, whoa whoa i can't afford that then you drop the bomb that those are the babies and the entry level ones and their mouths hit the floor um right after that they're 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 right away hooked on getting a system because they love that and they love the price on them if anyone wants to go higher end than that uh, i do have a higher set in my truck of the piccolos the mm3 and the elite carbon woofer oh so you so actually have them in your in a demo vehicle yep. ready to go tried tested and true we use them we demo them every day uh we've done a lot of customer vehicles with the hybrid we said some with the hybrids and, and a couple with the elates as well so we we've had those clientele that when we show them the truck uh, the demo truck they they do say we want this but we just tone it down a little notch and and we'll present that and we do a couple of five digit systems here and there all right. So let me stick with you on this one, Conrad. Another thing that I wrote down here that Dave mentioned was that Morel is known for having exemplary off-axis performance. So I see that you put, you know, those speakers in the kick panels, you know, and again, we don't always get the ideal location to put the speakers exactly where we want them to get that perfect staging. So I'd like to hear your, your feedback on, on that statement about the off-axis performance. For that category, if we can make a Jeep Wrangler sound good, because that's the most off-axis tweeter in the world. It points straight up. That that's proven right there. That Morel can be put tweeters in factory locations pointing up, and the Jeeps sound fantastic. So that's that's the only that's the worst one that you can get to, and it's awesome. We've done okay. quite a few. Jeeps. So you do agree with that statement about the off-axis performance? Hundred percent. I'm gonna I'm gonna add my two bit on there. I'm gonna say that's true too. I've heard them. You know, I've listened to Morel before, and I, I remember one of the vehicles was um, I was actually judging an Iaskan event many, many, many years ago mm -hmm. at Performance World where I met Dave. I keep saying this every time we bring up. Um, but I was a judge there, and the vehicle, it was a Golf, and it had uh, Morels, and they were down in the kick panels. And I kind of pre, you know, if you guys know this stuff, you're going to walk in, you, you kind of have a prejudgment of what's going to go on here. I was blown away. I could not believe the staging that this guy had set up with I'm like, where are the other tweeters? Are they hidden somewhere? Because that voice is dead center on the top of the dash. In fact, on the hood, and I couldn't figure it out. 
And I think, and he was like, you know what? I couldn't do it before, but with these morels, it made it happen for me. And that has been true for, I mean, that must have been 20 years ago. And I don't, I think that has stayed, uh, continued to stay true. Does this surprise you, Dave? No, and, and that's the reason why, you know, some of those partnerships with uh, those speaker manufacturers and some of the whole high-end OEM clients uh, exist because Morel is able to achieve some things in, in uh, off-access response that uh, is difficult to, to, to replicate. So, um, you know, that's often a compliment that we hear all the time. And, and like I said, you know, that tweeter, the 2.1-inch, uh, uh, sorry, the 1.1-inch dome tweeter, uh, that's really tall, gives you incredible off-axis response. And, and plays down low for a tweeter. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it, you know, like I said earlier, you know, tweeters typically cross over around 5,000 hertz. I mean, you know, you can cross these things down to, you know, 2,000 hertz, 2,500, or whatever the case may be, even lower than that, and, uh, and, and not worry about it. Okay. You talked about fitment. Conrad showed an excellent example with that classic truck. And in fact, you mentioned the MDF thickness being like, again, I'm going to go back to how thin that crazy speaker is. Uh, I made Conrad record a video of this speaker playing because I've never actually experienced it yet. And you talk about it a lot. So I said, Conrad, do you mind just snapping a quick video of what this thing looks like when it's playing? Let's just roll this video real quick and just see what this thing does. So out of the gate, that pancake vibrates a lot more than I thought it would, to be honest. I know it's not like crazy experience. We're not looking at a sub, folks. This is just, a, what is that, a six and a half driver, uh, Conrad? Yep. So that's what it looks like. So when we're talking about fitment, I think Conrad was really cool to bring up two different scenarios. One was the classic car scenario, and the other was the European scenario. Is there anything else to add to that that dealers need to know as far as a solution when it comes to this type of uh, speaker? Dave. Well, you know... Limited space applications, obviously the most popular for Virtus Nano, but here's the thing, you're not compromising much. Um, you know, obviously a, a deeper speaker, you know, could deliver deeper bass, but there's nothing wrong with using Virtus Nano in other applications, you know, where you do have the space. Um, you know, for, perhaps, you know, might make the install a little bit easier. So, you know, there's all kinds of applications where Virtus Nano uh, exists. In fact, on the home audio side, you know, they're using variations of that speaker as a, as an in-wall speaker, right? As part part of a, a TV soundbar. I mean, so there's all kinds of uh, different uh, places and, and spots that you can put these speakers. And down the road, we'll have a four-inch version of this speaker as well. So, you know, if you're, you're even tighter on space, you know, the four-inch is going to be an awesome solution. And that should be coming out uh, uh, relatively soon. All right, Conrad, talk, speak to the other techs that are listening in. Like, bro, when do, when when does this thing save the day? This, it, it, I mean, it's it saves the day on on if you're doing any European, any classics. But you got to remember when they invented this, there was a regular Verta speaker, and it outperformed the regular Verta speaker. So that tells you right there that it's worth its weight in gold. Of they didn't just invent this for an application; they may have started that way. And then it outperformed what was already available and they went, oops. And then they discoed the regular Virtus. So it's not, you're not losing any mid base at all. This is better than what was predecessor to this. Amazing. Okay. Uh, last point, which I really want to bring up. Morel, above and beyond everything we talked about, Dave, everything you brought to the table, the, the hexa coil and the, the car technology and the Virtus Nano and the applications. It has a world-class leading warranty. I'd like to give you an opportunity to tell everybody about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, one of the longest warranties uh, in the industry uh, is from Morel, and we're you know they offer a three-year warranty on uh, their products, which you know is outside the regular industry norm, which you know typically can be a year or two. So across the board, no matter what level of speaker you're buying. Or product you're buying, you're you're getting a three-year warranty, and and the beauty, beautiful thing about that warranty is, you know, if something does break, I mean, we replace it with another one. The customer's on his way, and uh, we're we're good as gold. So uh, it's no nonsense. It also shows um, that you have confidence in your product in order to you know offer a three-year warranty. And uh, you know, if you're buying your your products, your Murrah products, obviously from us, we're the Canadian distributor of that, but 
you know, tag that along with some Dynamat, which we also supply, and we throw on an additional warranty uh, of one year to that. So now a customer could get four years of warranty because we know that sound deadening is going to improve the sound quality and the performance of the speaker and potentially make it more reliable. So, you know, you could get up to four years. That's amazing. Con uh, Conrad, I want to give an opportunity to comment on that with with your final statement. They're, they're, they're fantastic. And the warranty, like, you, like Dave said, is bulletproof. Uh, if anyone's not able to or not selling these in their in their store and they can i would suggest a jump all over the brand it did help uh make us who we are and uh i mean build wise for some numbers three bad drivers in eight years wow that's like yeah. nothing yeah very okay. very low that changes conrad guys like conrad a lot of money you know every time a car comes back into the install bay and you've got to remove a speaker send it out and that sort of thing. I mean, it all adds to the bottom line. So liability, I'm sure Conrad can attest is uh, important. Okay. Conrad, I want to thank you for taking the time, man. Beautiful shot, beautiful display. And uh, thank you for bringing uh, some of the photos that, you, uh, that you've that you done for installs to kind of shed some light on everything that, uh, that Dave has presented. And uh, again, congratulations on your award. We look forward to having you again soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Conrad. It's nice, uh, Dave, having uh, someone like Conrad on there. You know what I mean? Um, kind of takes what you're saying, Dave, and and puts it into perspective that dealers could certainly understand. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I, I'm glad that Conrad has had the positive experiences that, that he's had. I mean, his clientele is not the uber high-end esoteric, you know, uh, let's do a you know $50,000 install sort of thing. But his, you know, they're looking for nice, clean, um, um, Installations that are reliable, you know, Conrad pays a lot of attention to, you know, cleanliness and that sort of stuff. And, you know, the way he routes his wire and all that type of stuff, which is fantastic. But he also values the performance of the product and, you know, he shows great, great pride, you know. Um, so yeah, it was nice to see, hear from Conrad. Um, I'm hoping that we'll have an opportunity, like before we finish up here, just to show a little bit of uh, some of the voice calls that we're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Let's go. Let's take you know, a look. So, I was talking about the the hex attack voice coil. So you know, here's a sample of a um, uh, a voice coil from one of the six and a half inch drivers. Now this is pretty massive. If I take the voice coil former out of there, um, you'll see. You know, that's a very it's you know about the diameter of a, a coke can, if not bigger. And here's the motor assembly that resides up inside the speaker. Voice coil uh, goes around the magnet, as you can see. And uh, there's a nice copper shield around the outside of this particular motor assembly. And like I mentioned, this motor assembly is shielded and it helps prevent any stray uh, magnetic fields from, you know, robbing power from the motor assembly. You know, when you have a speaker mounted inside a door, you know, that motor or that magnet is trying to draw uh, or attract itself to some of the metal there. And that's kind of robbing some of the energy from the, from the magnet assembly. So having... The motor assembly inside the speaker with the shield is focusing all of that magnetic energy specifically on the voice coil. And, you know, another benefit of the large voice coil is heat dissipation. But the other thing is control. You know, I'm going to show you a woofer here. Here's a 10-inch woofer that has a gigantic voice coil. Okay? Absolutely massive. Um, and why is that important? Well, you know, heat dissipation is one thing. But something else, and I'm just going to pull open, one, you know, one of my kids' basketballs here. Um, you know, if you took a ball here and was trying to hold it, you know, like a very small voice coil at the bottom and bounce that up and down, it would be very tough to keep it, you know, in control. But when you have a larger voice coil and you can grasp more of the cone, or in this case, basketball, there's more more control, more linearity, less rocking, that sort of thing. So that kind of gives you another benefit as to why a larger voice coil is more important. More control, more stability, the cone. And, you know, those are all selling points uh, behind Morel and what make Morel really different and unique. Large voice coils, shielded. And kudos, sir. Again, a, a CMA first. Dave Singh, you brought a basketball to the to the party. Thank you very much for that. And that was a great demo. It's not my basketball. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, no, absolutely not. One of my kids. Um, okay, so let's review. You know, we've got some 
exclusive technology that Morel has built and engineered over the years. It's it's a unique company from a, 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 the perspective of its manufacturing, um, handmade, Israel, a supplier to very high-end OEM uh, manufacturers and vehicles, as well as uh, home audio, high-end, fidel high-fidelity speakers. Um, a, a, a very extensive line and offering for the car audio shop um, that ranges from, you know, like you said, $200 to $10,000, um, ultra high end, but most importantly, that bread and butter in the middle, you know, for the customers like Conrad. Y yeah, maybe he doesn't do $20,000 jobs every month, but I'll tell you, he's knocking back those three to $5,000 ones like it's nobody's business, right? And hey, <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all. Um, and of course, we're talking about solutions, right, with the Virtus Nano. And finally, uh, all backed by a leading, a industry leading warranty of three years. And if you're doing business with Gemsense, smack on some Dynamat with that, you get an extra year, making it four years total of warranty. Dave, that's my recap. What's your final message to dealers interested in morale? I think you did a good job, Ben. I mean, everything that you covered is important, but, uh, you know, hopefully all of the information that we passed along to you help dealers understand that there's a real story behind Morel. It's just not another speaker brand. You know, they do all these great OEM things. They do, you know, incredible home audio business. Um, you know, the OEM partnerships are really what allow Morel to develop the technologies that they have uh, to offer to the aftermarket world. So, you know, there's so much technology to talk about, but at the end of the day, uh, the thing to remember about Morel, and this is coming from Morel specifically, you know, compare them to any speaker at any price and you will not be disappointed. Any speaker at any price. So give it a shot. Give us a call. You want to find out more info? MorelHiFi.com is the website. And if you're a Canadian dealer, get a hold of the team at GemSend.com. They'll set you up as they are the Canadian exclusive distributor. Dave, well done, sir. Well done today. Appreciate Thank it, Conrad. I'm going to play some basketball now. I'm going to play some basketball. Take care now. Take care. All right. That was Dave Singh from Jemson. I'll talk about Morel today. Um, big weekend coming up tomorrow. We are Friday today, but tomorrow we're doing something real special. Uh, for those of you who haven't made it to Orlando and Knowledge Fest, I want you to tune in tomorrow, Saturday, June 11th. We're going live to KFest Orlando. We'll have special guest Chris Cook president of ME with us, as well as a, a, a slew of different special guests from different brands, because there's a ton of product announcements going down today and tomorrow. And we're going to get you guys, our CMA audience, the scoop. So that's tomorrow uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern, Saturday, live from Knowledge Fest. We're doing a 12 volt insider. Of course, I want to remind you to continue tuning in to CMA Networks as we continue through the voyage that is car audio right through to June 14th. All those brands, one brand a day, we go deep diving about all these premium car audio brands. And last but not least, of course, make sure you visit our website, cmanetworks.com. We've got brand new search tools so you could sift through hundreds of different product and training videos, whether it's by category, by brand, or even by your favorite trainer. Check out my man, Dave Singh. He's got his own profile on cmanetworks.com. That's it. Thanks for hanging in there today and watching CMA Connected, presented by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Stop it. Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's last call already. Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?